Hi, my name is Tim with Cisco's Engineering Licensing Office, and we're going to learn how to register a product. Starting off on Software Central, that's software.cisco.com, select Smart Software Licensing. That will take you to the Cisco Smart Software Manager. A good best practice is to make sure that you have the license available in the virtual account that you're going to be registering your product to. So let's go ahead first by transferring a license from the default queue. We can select the default virtual account and then pick the license that we're going to be using for the exercise. We'll be registering an ASAV using a standard one gigabyte license and we're going to transfer that license to the Cisco Live virtual account. The preview is helpful to understand before and after snapshot and then by clicking on complete transfer it will move the license over to the virtual account that we've chosen, in this case, Cisco Live. And voila, here's the license that we just moved over from the default queue. The next step is to create an ID token. Now, an ID token is used once during the registration process. It's never used again after that. By default, they expire after 30 days, but just because the token ID is expired doesn't mean that you can't register more products. You would simply create a new ID token to register any additional products after a token ID has expired. And this is exactly what the token ID looks like. It's an alphanumeric string. Whenever I use this token ID, it will associate a product instance with a virtual account. So you'll want to copy it to your clipboard and keep in mind the power of this is that you can use this token ID to script automated deployment. This means if you know the token ID, you can register a product. If you can register a product, then you can consume a license. Now let's go ahead and configure an ASAV and use that token ID to go through the registration process. The ASAV is a product that supports smart software licensing only. So if we do a show license all, we'll actually see that the smart licensing enabled status is equal to yes. And currently our compliance is evaluation. That's because we haven't registered this ASAV. We don't have any licenses that are currently in use. And as a result, our smart licensing state is unidentified. That just simply means that smart licensing is turned on, but we're not doing anything with it. The registration process starts with one single command, license smart register ID token. Then we take that token ID and paste it directly into the command line. Now what is happening is this ASAV is now connecting through the cloud to Cisco's back end to exchange our registration details. We can confirm this with the show license all command now to take a look at our compliance state is still in evaluation. But our smart licensing state is now registered. That means that we were able to connect to the smart software manager. So if we select the product instance tab, we can now see the ASAV that we just registered. Keeping in mind, we're currently not using a license at this point. Now, in order to consume a license, we'll need to use the platform level command in order to make that happen. On the ASAV, we can simply issue config T followed by license smart. And then there's a command called throughput level. And the throughput level will allow us to select the license that we're using, knowing that we've just transferred a one gigabyte license into our Cisco Live Smart Account, we can go ahead and choose that level. The output of a show license all will now show as being in compliance, and we're pulling the license from the Cisco Live pool. Our grace period is no longer in use, meaning we're no longer in evaluation mode, and we're now using an ASAV standard one gigabyte license, and our smart licensing state is authorized. Next, let's take a look at the smart software manager, and we can see now, here's our ASAV license, and this is the one that we're currently using. If we click on that license, it'll actually show the name of the product instance that we registered and consumed that license with. Again, the product instance tab is helpful to understand the products that have connected, and we can also see the license that we've currently picked up as a result of our configuration changes. So this ASAV is now fully functional. Let's take a look at an example of being in an out of compliance state. Remember that smart software licensing will never disallow you from turning on features or using software. 
So for example, we have in our Los Gatos account, we currently have a 50 megabyte license there. But what I want to do is I want to register with a virtual account that doesn't have any licenses in it. So let's switch over to the Santa Cruz virtual account. We can see no licenses. We currently don't have any product instances that have connected. So let's go through the configuration steps on a CSR. Now on a CSR, this is a router that supports both smart software licensing and classic pack-based licenses. This means the first time you log into a CSR, you'll need to turn on smart software licensing. And we know this because the output of a show license all command says we've got primary license storage. That's pack-based licenses. In order to turn on smart software licensing, it all starts with one simple command. Go to config T and then license smart enable. That's the single command that turns on smart licensing for a product that supports both modes. But remember, it's a choice between one or the other, not both at the same time. After we've turned on smart licensing, we can see that the agent status has changed. We can also see that Smart Call Home was automatically turned on, so there's no configuration changes we need to do with Smart Call Home. So let's take a look at the output of Show License All to see exactly what's changed. First, Smart Software Licensing is still enabled. Second, our status is unregistered, meaning we've turned on Smart Licensing but we're not doing anything with it yet. And you can also see that we're not consuming any licenses, that's because we haven't issued any commands to actually consume a license at this point. Next, let's go back to Smart Software Manager and generate an ID token. Again, you can use a token ID to register one product or every single product within your network. It's used once during the registration process and then never used again after that. So this token ID that we're creating here for the Santa Cruz virtual account will associate any product instances with this specific virtual account. The next thing we'll want to do is copy this token ID to the clipboard because we're going to use that during the configuration steps on this CSR. Okay, so let's continue and register this product. The command to do that is license smart register ID token. Then we'll simply take the token ID that we created for our Santa Cruz virtual account and paste it directly into the command line. After pressing enter, the product will be off and connecting through the cloud to go through the registration process. In just a few seconds here, we'll get a response back that shows that our registration was successful and that our state is now authorized. Let's review the output of the on-screen login to understand exactly what happened. First, we can see that our export compliance was turned on. That's because we turned it on in the token ID. We can also see that our agent was successfully registered through the cloud. So now if we do a show license all, we can take a look at what's changed along the way. We're now associated with the NAPLINK smart account, and more specifically, we're registered now to the Santa Cruz virtual account. At this point in time, we don't have any licenses in use. That's because we haven't used the configuration command on this platform to trigger it to consume a license. So let's do that now. Platform hardware throughput level is the command in order to make that happen. And what we're going to do is we're going to trigger this CSR to pick up a 50 megabyte license from the queue. Now, if you remember, we intentionally didn't put a license into our Santa Cruz virtual account. That's because we want to force it into an out of compliance state so that you understand what the behavior is. So remember with smart software licensing, we will never disallow you from turning on software or using features. It's really the visibility that shows you if you're in this state where you're using something where you currently don't own a license. Now, what's happening with this CSR is it's now going through the registration process and it's consuming a license. And we can now see in the response that it just got back that we are in an out of compliance state and our state is OOC. So if we do a show license all, let's take a look at what's changed. We're still registered with the NAPLINK smart account. And we're still associating this product instance with the Santa Cruz virtual account. We can also see that our status is now out of compliance and our license usage indicates we're using a 50 megabyte AX license for the CSR.
So let's switch back over to the Smart Software Manager and see what it shows. Here's our 50 megabyte license. We currently don't own any in the queue, but we're using one, and as a result, we have insufficient licenses. Typically, there are three choices to make here. One, you can transfer more licenses from another account. Two, you can modify your usage. Or three, you can elect to purchase those licenses. In order to correct this situation, all we're going to need to do is transfer a license from one of the other virtual accounts. I also want to point out that the Alerts tab now shows a major alert. That's because we have insufficient licenses by using that 50 megabyte license and our Santa Cruz virtual account pool is in that out of compliant state. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a license transfer in order to correct that situation. Doing a license transfer is like moving money from your checking account to your savings account. We're going to simply start off here in the Santa Cruz virtual account and we can see under the action column there's an option there to transfer licenses. We'll simply select the default account or the virtual account that we want to transfer from and the quantity of licenses. Again, doing a preview will show you a before and after snapshot before making the confirmation. And once that's been done, we can see now that this pool, the Santa Cruz virtual account, has been returned to compliance because we currently own one license in that queue and we're currently using one. Now here's a helpful tip. Going back to the CSR, if we do a show license all, we'll still show that it's in and out of compliance state. The reason why is that the next time this product checks in, it will go ahead and true up what's going on within that account. But you can force it, you can make it happen sooner with this command license smart renew authorization. And what that's going to do is trigger this CSR to go ahead and connect in one more time and exchange the product details, the license consumption, and the smart account virtual account. We can see now that our state is changed to authorized. So if I do a show license all, we can now see that we are still registered and we are registered with the NapLink smart account, more specifically the Santa Cruz virtual account. But if we scroll down a little bit more, we can see our status is now authorized on this CSR. So we're using that 50 megabyte security license and we're in compliance, we're authorized because it pairs up with what is in the pool. In other words, what is in that virtual account. So at this point in time, we're done with this CSR. Uh, it is operational, it's authorized, and it's consuming the license that we configured. Let me show you a few more features that we have within the Smart Software Manager that are gonna make your life so much easier. There's a feature that was added recently that will allow you to do license conversion from within the Smart Software Manager. So if we switch back over to the portal and click on the License Conversion tab, we can see product activation keys that are currently within our Smart Account. And then we can select the option to convert those over to Smart Licenses. Just as easy as selecting the virtual account that we want those licenses to wind up in and picking and assigning a quantity to that, uh, we can take those licenses and convert them from being a classic pack-based licenses. Keep in mind, again, you can't go backwards from this point, so once it's converted, it's converted for good, and then click on the confirmation. It will convert that license from a pack into a smart license, and you'll get a really handy notification on your screen to let you know that the process has been completed. So for example, now that we've done that, we can go back to our inventory tab and then select the San Jose virtual account. And right here in the licenses tab is the license that we just did the conversion on. So that's a very simple and convenient way to convert licenses without having to skip back and forth between multiple portals. Let's run a few license reports and see exactly what's going on with our smart account. In just a click, I can get a snapshot that shows me at the very top all of my licenses that I'm using. Here's our ASAV and our 50 megabyte CSR. And then it also gives a breakdown of each of the virtual accounts. So here's our Santa Cruz virtual account with our one license being consumed. And then here's that 50 meg license that we did the conversion on in the San Jose virtual account. And then lastly, this is our ASAV that we configured to consume a license from the Cisco Live virtual account. Scrolling down a little bit more, we can get a snapshot of when our licenses are getting ready to expire. This is helpful when you're 
trying to understand maybe your future purchasing patterns. Another cool report, and this one's probably my favorite, is the product instance report. You can run this report and view it on the screen, and it will show you some high-level details of the product types that have connected and maybe consuming licenses from your account. But I also want to point out, you can export these out to comma-separated value CSV and use that in Excel to get an additional level of detail. So if we take a look at this one, we'll see the same type of details at the very top. We know that we've got an ASA V and a CSR. But directly below that, it'll show us the virtual accounts and then also the virtual account name, the product that's listed, the product type, our serial number, the registration date and the last time we contacted, and towards the right-hand side we can see our licenses that are being consumed. So export licensing uh, reports out of the tool will also give you an additional level of detail. The email notifications is extremely helpful to understand what's going on with your smart account. What you'll receive are daily summaries based on the level of detail that you select that you want to receive and after saving the status on that it will give you a, a quick notification that your status has been updated and the following day you'll get these uh, emails in your inbox to kind of tell you different things that have happened with your smart account. The last thing to point out here is the activity log and this kind of keeps track of what we've done so far. We, we did some license conversions and then also in the event log we can see exactly what has transpired here. We took a ASAV and we registered and consumed a license. Then we took a CSR, registered it. We went into an out of compliance state. We reported a shortage and that shortage was corrected by transferring that license from one account to the other. So that was the grand tour of smart software licensing and software central. Don't forget to bookmark software.cisco.com.